Hey, what's going on guys? Comic again the year. Last video we've implemented the routine to convert bytes um, to ASCII basically. So whatever byte we have, um, uh, we've created a function to uh, convert a nimble, which is the half of the byte, like the first straight, the, the first uh, digit or letter and the second digit or letter. So to convert e uh, either the first one or the second one from kind of like integer to uh, to the character, to the ASCII character, encode that as the ASCII character, and that's what we have so far. Okay, and in this video, uh, we're gonna write a routine that would be uh, providing this sort of an output, which is known as the hex dump. So now we can print the only byte. So currently we're printing um, this test one, so that we don't want to print the test byte anymore, and instead we want to print. Um, uh, yeah, so that's probably hex dump. Uh, this schema would be down below, right? Just right below the variables. Yeah, I think this might be the case. And uh, yeah, hex to ask you that was the procedure. And here we had uh, a bit of a boilerplate code to actually test it. So we're going to be reusing this code. Um, yeah, we're going to be reusing this code. But for now, but now, so I don't want to, so to SI, we're, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be different data. So in particular, the address plus the offset. Um, okay, so yeah, I believe, I believe that just for now, we should, let's just command out all the stuff here. All right. Um, and now we should just be uh, jumping back to to console yeah this is okay so let's create a procedure procedure to display or print hex dump to screen so let's call it um print memory right so print memory and well, the very first thing to consider, it might not be 100% necessarily needed, but let's clear the direction flag to ensure store single byte, store single byte instruction increments SI register. So we just go incrementing, not decrementing. So if the direction flag is equal to one, um, in that case, we uh, in that case uh, calling the store uh, the stosb instruction would result in decrementing the SI register. But we want to increment that because we're going to be uh, pointing SI register to this address, and then we want to increment through the addresses. Okay. Um, register sure yeah okay and we're gonna be using the bx register so say move bx zero uh we're gonna be using the bx register as the line counter so initialize line counter line, line counter so let's say bx serves as a, as a line counter initialize it okay and now uh, the label so we need to process the lines so I say next line so uh, this is uh, this this is gonna be um, a loop uh, to loop over all the lines over all the lines uh, of the chunks of 32 bytes so we have 32 bytes here 32 bytes a year, so we need to loop over uh, these addresses, and they are also available right over here, down, down below. Okay, so uh, the very first thing to consider, we need to compare our, our counters. So I want to say compare BX and 32. So by literally answer, answering the question, uh, is there any more lines to print okay so and jump greater equals to return so j 
jump greater equals to return if no if not then return okay and um here let's define the return and um, here we just want to print a new line at the very end so I can say move as I new line I hope we still have the new line yeah we have a new line great and here I want to point SI to new line and call print string so just print that here I want to print new line and then return all right so let's move further on um so now we need to initialize the si register uh to point the si to lines plus bx to lines plus bx so what this does so know this notice this square bracket so if there was if there was no square brackets and let's say we say only like move lines in this case what would be stored into the si register the address uh the address uh uh of this of this element would get stored there right but uh we actually need not the address but the value okay so not the address but the value and uh, the value of this L1 is the pointer to this this kind of string, okay? So, I mean, like, if without square brackets, we just uh, get an offset from, from zero, then the first instruction, and so on and so on, and then we just get the location of where this is stored, but we don't, but we don't want uh, to know where this is stored. We, know, we need to know the value we need to know to have the value at l1 and the value at l1 is the is this one and it is the pointer to this string so hope that's clear um uh oh my god where is that yeah and the reason why i use this plus bx is uh, so at start bx is equal to zero so it would start pointing to line one then we add as far as this is the word we need to add two and two bytes so then we see uh so when bx is equal to two it would be pointing to the value at l2 or this value then uh, the value at l3 or this value and so on and that's how we can hook all of these strings so that's gonna how it works and we're gonna be using this technique uh again in order to actually uh, initialize the address to write the bytes from so here point si to corresponding uh, uh, byte string address uh, byte string address okay and call print string so we actually want to print that so want to print byte string address so print this one okay so just point out that l1 l2 and l16 okay and now we need to say move si and this time read address plus bx and what this is doing this is this is getting even more interesting so we are pointing L, uh, we are pointing uh, si to the value of the stored at from the, the first one the first element the second element and so on so uh, in order to have exactly this 0x0500s zero zero five, in hexadecimal so when the bx is equal to 0 si uh, would be equal to this value which means then if we <clears throat> if we call the store single byte uh, sorry if we uh, uh, call the load single byte by the way uh, just um, here is there is a bit of a should be load single byte here right so if we call the load single byte in that case um, it would be uh, reading from this exact address 
which we need to, to obtain because this is the exact uh, beginning of the address uh, of the address range uh, of where we want to inspect uh, the hex dump from okay so we need uh, all the memory addresses from here and up to here plus another last 32 bytes so I hope that's clear okay now let's move further on so here yeah I'll just provide the comment tree I want to point SI to to the address to the display to to get say to get hex dump from so literally those we want to read okay to get hex uh, dump from so let's also say read from address and the, val the variable name actually, uh, uh, yeah, explicitly or implicitly, not sure, tells this. Okay, another thing to consider, uh, we need some sort of a counter. So just like we used a BX to count the lines, we also need a counter to count, um, to count uh, the horizontal, to, to, count, to count the bytes, basically, right? To count the bytes. We need up to 32 bytes. And when we reach the number of 32 bytes, we just need to... I go to the next line that's pretty it but here it's enough to use uh, i'm using ch here uh so this is the byte counter i need I, I reset and initialize this as well so how did i um so ch uh is it's the lower uh lower part of the cx register so just the uh, eight bits this this is enough yeah, CX, 16 bits, yeah, CH, just, just the 8 bits. Uh, and it serves uh, as a byte counter, as the byte counter. And we want to initialize it, right? Okay, so, um, yeah, then uh, it's just for, just to prettify the output a little bit. I want to have a, a tiny little space uh, like this in every, uh, in every string, but in order to save the bytes and not not making them not not making them here it just takes up to 16 bytes we can do this in one byte so we can simply say move ah0x0e which is the bias code bias code to type uh, uh, to type a character character to screen in teletype mode and then move L and the space. So which character, so yeah, which character to type. Um, and then int hexadecimal 10. And here we want to print, print space after um, address address and column okay so that's literally what we're supposed to be doing here okay and the net and then uh we want to look over the characters um or over the bytes so we can call it next next byte basically i think that should be fairly okay right and here as far as we already have our SI being initialized, so we can already say load single byte. So here we want to read next byte uh, where SI is pointing to and then increment SI register. So go into the next address. It's a fancy way of how to, to read the bytes uh, from a certain location in, iteratively in using the only command here as pretty it and now another uh, uh, another condition so we need to compare ch with 32 okay well I know probably we could have used we could have used here or maybe not okay I'm not sure whether I need the entire so probably I could have used just bh or bl here okay but uh I, i've been debugging with the bx so let it be bx uh it's okay to waste the entire register for this here because we're not going to be using this 
okay we, we're gonna be using this later on as well um but but it's okay so just just never mind okay so here we want us to, to know if we have already printed 32 bytes so uh so yeah let's say is there any more uh is there any more bytes to print let's say is there any more bytes left to print and here as well um is there any more lines left to print um hold on yeah sorry guys i just uh i've been uh, i've been checking the spelling if the spelling is correct because yeah i don't really want to make those grammar mistakes all right so so we is, is there any more bytes uh left to print all right and if so uh uh so <clears throat> i don't know well probably we could have we could have used uh jump equals not jump greater equals oh no no here here it is essential actually yeah but here i don't know i don't know why did i use jump equals here not jump greater equals probably because we never exhausted okay okay uh let it be just uh as as i've been doing in, in the preparation so uh, yeah okay jump equals to continue continue uh and here literally the process go to okay let's just go to continue continue label to uh go to the next line eventually okay and now the most interesting thing starts so um actually our logic to so this logic to print a single byte is is getting on the cards so we don't need to initialize si anymore okay we just need this sort of a thing and let's bring it down here so in assembly you know like you're you're building everything block by block and the block that you've built previously might be useful in the next steps so it's really really nice let me just click, quickly check this out so yeah um hold on a sec is this really uh, i'm just i'm wondering about the indents probably these are the indentations from okay, if i have a look at the shell sorry guys just um my god where is the shell shell is here um No, the indentations are correct for some reason. Yeah, it's not really that great, but okay. And yeah, uh, so we don't want to move the test bind anymore because uh, we have, because we have, yeah, load single byte actually already initializes that. All right, so yeah, we don't really need this one and oops nope so here is the same from the previous part so uh because we're gonna be uh kind of like decoding the byte in two steps first the left nibble then the right nibble or the first and the second so first we need to preserve the value of um of al into CL, I'm using this time CL. So uh, it's, only, it's like in this case, the CH, the CX register is getting used uh, very efficiently. So the higher part of CH serves as, as the point, uh, as the counter of the bytes, and the lower one uh, holds temporary value for AL. So that's that's oh sorry, that's a really efficient way of doing things. Well, at least for me, for for my current level of understanding the assembly and this low level coding. So again, like let's walk, let's quickly walk through through this code that we've written in the previous part for those who probably didn't follow. So because th this is the heart of the entire routine to print this hex dump. So how how can we print the single uh, the value for a single byte? 
So we, pres uh, we store the current va value of AL that can contains the entire byte, the whole byte is stored into AL. So whatever, so let's say we've written this, this byte, so two digits, the bytes is represented by the two digits, okay? So let's say we've written this one. So let's say we have like, uh, I don't know, like A, A3, okay? Let's say, let's, let's say we have this sort of a byte here. So A3, um, it's in hexadecimal, okay? So let's say the uh, AL is now equal to A3. So now after this operation, so we put in the value of uh, AL to CL. So now CL is equal to A3 and it stores this value for now. Now uh, we bitwise end in um, AL with uh, this constant of uh, F0, which would result, uh, so here, so if we if we can like bitwise end it with f and zero, so what it gives us, uh, so it would it would give us initially uh, eventually a a zero because this one and whatever of uh, whatever bits are available here would result in having the same, uh, and no matter what bits here bitwise end with a zero would result in zero. So after this operation. After this operation, but with this uh, kind of constant, a3 turns into a0. But in order to extract a, the next step to consider, we need to bitwise shift uh, uh, to, to shift right to right shift the a by four bits, and this would be a zero a eventually. And then we can make use of this value of a. So that's clear. So shift and right four bits, and then. Uh, and uh, and already AL is like what we need really. Then we call this hex to ASCII routine that we were in the previous part, and we just print uh, depending on whether it's a digit or a letter. So if a digit, we just uh, add in the value of uh, character zero, otherwise the value of character A minus ten, because uh, otherwise it would be zero. But uh, A is equal to ten in hexadecimal, so hence this minus ten. All right. Um, and then we do the stuff for the for the second uh, for the second kind of digit. So we also need to extract this three. So in order to do that, again, like we're restoring the value of AL by uh, referencing the CL. Okay, then AL uh, is gonna is gonna get bitwise ended with this constant. And in this case, in this case, if we just say zero F, and this would result in this sort of a thing. And we don't need to right shift anything because we already have the second digit at the right position. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Okay, and let's bring it back to initial state. All right. Okay, so also we need to increment the CH, so the byte counter. So increment byte counter. Okay, increment the byte counter. Um, and notice that uh, for every byte, uh, we kind of print two digits. So here the first digit gets printed, here, here is the second digit gets printed. So again, like this is, this is important because one byte consists of, of, of up to two digits. So uh, every time CH is incremented, we uh, end up by printing exactly two digits, which represent a single byte in hexadecimal. So I hope that's clear. And here we just want to jump to the next byte. So here we do process the next byte. So process, process next byte. And, and this stuff kind of, re uh, this stuff repeats again. Okay, and now, here, what happens? What happens if if we do exhaust all the bytes within the single line? So let's say pointer gets here, and then pointer gets here, and then we get and then we exhaust it. So we need to go to the next line. But before that, uh, there is um, a couple of things to do. Well, this might be treated as a cleanup at some point. Yeah, don't forget to put the semicolons. Continue, continue. So here, the very first thing we need not to forget to increment bx by two. So uh, it's not exactly increment. So let's say update, let's say update 
line counter counter in bx uh let's say yeah line counter okay let it be just see it's seen it's clear that it's bx so let's say update line counter um yeah update the line counter then what okay so now i just want to print a new line so move s i new line i want to print the new line after uh current line is has been exhausted so point um si to new line variable and call print string okay so print new line uh for the next address so this print new line would, would be printed in this so this guy goes from a new line this one goes from a new line let's say um print new line character every next line okay okay is, does it sound weird okay let it just Let's say print, uh, print the new line character, character by the end of the line. Okay, and now we can jump to the next line. So jump next line. So it's kind of nested, nested loop here. All right, so here we want to process next line. That's pretty it. Uh, we're almost we're almost done. Okay, we're almost done. And also, yeah, return return. So when we get a, uh, when we get the lines exhausted. Oh, okay, we got the return already been implemented here. So yeah, so just want to print the new line at the very end. Okay, and yeah. Okay, guys. So it seems like it seems like the routine is now complete, and I hold my breath and I try and try to call this print memory. So now it should print the uh, hex dump. So now it should print something like this to screen and then ex uh, uh, exit back to to the shell. Oh my god! Yeah, let's have a look if this works ever. So do we have any? Uh, build errors doesn't seem so and edit and oh my god here we go but um hold on a sec something something is horribly wrong here um something is wrong okay so what's wrong with my Um, I don't even know. Okay, just just hold on a second and figure out what's wrong here. Okay, guys, I just figured out. So I just forgot the zero terminating character after the new line. That's the reason why I was printing this very first address. Because the print string routine, uh, what it does, it prints the next byte until it uh, encounters a zero terminating character. So now this should be okay. Yeah, awesome, perfect. So now we have all the 512 bytes being printed to screen and well as far as i've been debugging this for quite a bit of time i know that this uh prints exactly the memory from uh from from this specific locations but if you're doing this for the first time like i did a couple of days ago you might be wondering how on earth can we test that this works properly well i'm not going to be doing this uh in this video because it takes quite a bit of time but i can just show you or maybe I should. Okay, guys. Yeah, uh, I just I use the mighty copy paste here, and actually will show this. Okay, I'm sorry, but yeah. So if I just go back to I just have uh, addresses already been available here. So this address is from the boot sector. Okay, and just copy them, edit. So I'm not going to be changing this once, but just bear in mind that now we're gonna be. Yeah, th th this is a very interesting trick for debugging. 
So now read address, uh, this read address points to the boot sector start starting from 7C00 and so on. And by the time when we're going to be running this in the boot sector, we will have our editor. So whatever bytes we have in the editor, uh, those are the bytes that uh, are actually in the random access memory. And in order to make sure that uh, we have exactly the same results, we can uh, we can take a real memory dump from the emulator and then compare them uh, compare the values for our emulator and uh, for our uh, our hex dump with the hex dump from XXD, which is the hex editor under Linux. Okay, so now it should start uh, printing the uh, the bytes from the boot sector, and these are the bytes from the boot sector. Yeah, and what else? Um, now, yeah, let's go to the browser and this online emulator. So choose the file. Uh, I've been doing this <laughs> thousands, of, thousands of, or well, let's say hundreds of times when I was debugging. So, um, yeah, desktop game OS tutorials part 14. This image, right? Open, start emulation. And now, so I just need to run the editor because just have the, exactly the same state. And now I take this memory dump. I just download it. So what happens? So currently our editor, you know, like uh, as, as long as we run a certain app from the shell, it gets loaded, it, uh, it gets uh, loaded into the boot sector. It works in the boot sector. Then we jump there and so on. So in the boot sector at the address of 7C00, we need to, uh, we, we, we in, were intended to see exactly the same bytes as we see, as those we see here. And if it is so, this means that the logic for displaying bytes is working properly. So that's that's the way of how one can check that out. So let's go to the downloads. Um, and this, this is one that we need, rename. Yeah, it's j j just for absolute, uh, just for clarity. So let's go to memory dump again. And here is the memory dump, all right. Okay, and I'll just open the terminal here and I say xxd v86 um, memory.bin. And we don't need that many, the, all, all, all the stuff there. We just want to search for 00007C00, which is the starting point of a boot sector. And here is the starting point of the boot sector. Oh man, what have I done? Zero 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 seven C zero zero like this again. Ah, uh, okay. Let me just. Sorry, I wanted to show this fast, but it became slower. Okay, here it is. So, 7C00. Oh, it just goes. Okay. So, these are the bytes, and now let's go for a comparison. So, these are the bytes. So, B800, we have B800, then 008E. Um, yeah, 008E. D eight eight E D eight eight E then C somewhat and so on. Well, so it seems like it, it is, and it ends up with uh, with a C zero uh, seven D C zero seven D E O E zero seven D E zero seven D. So we have this the starting two bytes and the uh, the like the end the the two bytes at the very end being equal and if you're curious, you might just check all of them, but trust me, they would match actually. So yeah, well, uh, there might be some issue that I've been running into. So if the address is not accurate, then it might be duplicating some addresses. So, but uh, I just don't really want to 
check every single one instead i will quickly walk through so here it, it should be okay okay so yeah i will probably so here uh, this would be just in in within this tutorial part so say on command to inspect boot sector memory for debugging okay and here command out and on command below addresses for debug okay but yeah i just want to make sure so let's say if we say like uh, hexadecimal 500s and hexadecimal 500s here that we will have uh, that will be we would be having two exactly the same lines which is not a good idea so we need to make sure that they uh, grow in properly so 20 40 40 60 80 a0 c0 e0 then 6 0 0 20 40 60 80 a0 c0 e0 6 c0 e0 so this should be this should be correct and also the value is here well th this doesn't matter that much but just for clarity in order to avoid confusions if, let's say there might be just the wrong label but the right bytes and on the country so 500s, 20, 40, 60, 80, A0, C0, E0, then 600s, 20, 40, 60, 80, A0, C0, C0, yeah, C0, E0, yeah. So this should be, in theory, this should be correct. So you feel free to play around with this bytes. And then I've just shown you how, how, I've, how I've been debugging this sort of a thing. And as promised, at the very end, we have this exact uh, hex dump. So the look and feel is absolutely the same. So let's have a look one last time. Here, here we have our memory dump, but we just jump back to shell instead. So in the next uh, couple of tutorials, we're gonna be implementing the logic to actually write bytes to the certain memory location. So that's pretty it. And by the time we will do that, do that, our hex editor would be completed. And from, from that time, we would be able to actually type the bytes in then we'll need yeah uh, another thing that we'll need is to implement the run command just to explicitly jump from the shell to this address so 500 hexadecimal to actually execute starting from the first byte and then move on until the program is exhausted so that's that's kind of how this is going to be done okay guys so yeah this is it from my side um thanks for watching until the next time and take care